Okay. The next scriptures, Matthew 12, 34, says, Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Matthew 12, 37, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Okay. Countless, countless times in my life I have spoken negatively. And guess what? Spoken words, the asking and receiving policy of God, works both ways. And sometimes, when we ask God for a blessing, we're actually asking Him for a storm. Blessings pour down like rain, and rain doesn't come without a storm. So, my first point, spoken words will be negative or positive, depending on your character and your feelings. That is very true. If you are in a bad mood, and you're fighting with your spouse, or fighting with your brother, or fighting with your sister, or your mother, or your father, and having an argument, what are you going to say to that person in anger? Now that you know that your words have the power through God to take away and give, I hope that the next time you're in an argument with someone, you think for several minutes before you actually speak anything to them. You need to take a few minutes calm yourself down and be careful how you speak when I was married here's some information when I was married every time my ex-husband and I would fight it would be me leaving the conversation saying I want a divorce I want away from you I can't take this anymore I want a divorce I want a divorce all the time well what happened Within two years of me speaking that the first time, I'm divorced. When you speak out loud, those words go straight up to God. And then what does He do? He starts to rearrange your life to give you what you want. Now how does He do, how does he do that? I don't know. But He does it. When I was a pagan, one of my sayings was, whatever you ask for, the universe will rearrange itself to give it to you. Well, it's not the universe, because God created the universe. It's God that rearranges your life. So, your spoken words have the power to destroy your life, the same as they have the power to create your life. Now I'm going to take you to a scripture that I didn't talk about, but I'm going to go back to Jesus and the fig tree and how he walked by the fig tree and he said, you know, for it to never bear fruit again. I talked about that in my first teaching about faith. And he didn't look at he didn't look at the fig tree and then not say anything and just telepathically in his mind you know, thinking the fig tree's not going to bear any more fruit, the fig tree's not going to bear any more fruit. No, he said it out loud. Because he knows, and he knew then, whatever he spoke out loud went straight to his Father in Heaven. And then his Father in Heaven would do his will on earth. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. Okay? Your words are your truth. They are a reflection of your spirit. So if your spirit is in turmoil, your words are going to be in turmoil. Your words are going to be negative. You're not going to speak anything positive if you wake up every morning and you're depressed. And the more you speak out loud about your depression, and the more you speak out loud about the things that are making you sad, 
the longer you're going to remain that way. You need to wake up in the morning and ask God to help you feel better. If you're not praying every morning, you need to start. If you're not reading scripture for at least a half an hour every morning, it would probably be a good idea to start, especially if you have depression. If your marriage is in trouble, start. I wish I would have, and now I can't go back and change it. My words condemned me. They didn't justify me. I didn't know that my words were so powerful until God by his will gave me insight into what I was doing to myself and what I was doing to my life and the people around me. I couldn't see anything. I didn't know what was happening. Now I know. And every day I make sure that every word that comes out of my mouth is spoke with intention. God gives and takes away by your words. Absolutely. You ask for something, he'll give it to you. The whole time I was struggling with um, endometriosis, I said every single day probably for three years, I wish I could have a hysterectomy. I wish I could have a hysterectomy. Why can't they just take it all out? Now mind you, I wasn't even a Christian at this time. I was pagan. Denied God every day. But I was a child of God once before. I was baptized under him. I was already his. So was I living in sin? Yes, but that doesn't change the fact that I was his. So what did he do in 2010? I wound up having to have a hysterectomy. He gave me what I wanted. He rearranged my life to give me what I asked for. And then after I got what I asked for, was I thankful for it? Kind of, because the pain was gone. But at the same time, it was like a two-edged sword. Because I was no longer able to have children, and now I had the desire for children. Be careful what you say. Be very careful. Your words have power. You speak, God rearranges things to give you what you ask for. You can be walking through your day, going about your daily routine, and say, you know, I'd really like to have this, or you know, I really wish this was better, or you know, sometimes I just wish my husband would go away. Be very careful, because when you speak unintentionally, the next thing you know, your husband might just go away. You might get exactly what you're asking for. If it's in line with what God's will is for you, if he thinks that you could learn a valuable lesson from your husband walking away from you, then he'll let it happen. He will rearrange your life to make it so because you asked him for it. Be careful what you speak. 